what happens to the information? A lot of what you're collecting is, is patient, um, patient data of one kind or another. What, what, what's actually happening to that? So the information goes via SMS to a laptop or a tablet, which has an installation of our dashboard, which is called Kajua, that is running on it. So that platform receives the SMS-based data, parses the data, restructures it, and then creates a structured report, which can either be analyzed in our analytics dashboard, um, which is a web-based platform, or it can be exported via comma-separated values and analyzed in a more advanced statistical analysis tool. What's the reality, though, of people making decisions based on this information? Are they simply collecting data for accountability, or are they saying, oh, that's very interesting, we must do something about X? Yeah, we've had, we've had very, very divergent results. It depends on who's receiving the information and how they know to use that data. Um, the governance level in a, in a number of ministries that we've worked with um, has fairly weak decision-making capability, I would say. In a, and that's a, that's a broad generalization, but I could, I could back it up with, um, with experiences, but also I feel that I could bring colleagues to the table that would say the same thing. Um, another anecdotal example, when I was traveling recently in Malawi, um, the ministry there was traveling around and collecting 11 years worth of paper-based patient data. And so if you think currently the paper-based data, the reality is that it's not arriving in time to be useful. What it's arriving in time for is to be collated for a report for a donor mm. who threatens to remove funding unless that individual submits a report. And that's not, that's not decision making, that's, that's a school-like system, as yeah. opposed to our system allows for that near real-time data that, that arrives, is visualized, can be analyzed, um, and, and we do work with partners to ensure that the decision making process is in place, and then we check back in on a, on a regular basis, because our, our model, because we're nonprofit, I don't have to worry about selling something to someone. Mm. Our, our goal and our, what, what wakes me up every morning is impact. We measure lives saved, we measure babies delivered, we measure immunizations completed, um, and, and we don't charge for our software. We believe that partners should be able to download it and use it and modify it and build on it without paying a licensing fee, which could be a real barrier for some smaller clinics. And you were talking about a, one of your applications is about um, ensuring that fridges are at the right temperature, yeah. which again is a sort of in effect an emergency alert system. Yeah, so through a Gates-funded partnership with a group called Nextleaf, we have installed and run a pilot for fridge monitoring, where an SMS goes out from a temperature sensor to a clinician's phone, and then also to a ministry official's phone, to notify them when a temperature is outside of a safe range. And then the individual at the clinic goes to the facility, resolves the issue, and makes a note of the, of the resolution that they made, um, whether it be a maintenance issue, whether it be a false alarm. Um, and then the, the ministry officials themselves receive summary reports of the peaks and the troughs, so that they can identify Within a, within a system in a clinic where a, tr where a fridge itself may be unstable. Um, and we've had excellent results from the ministry level for the feedback on this, on well, using this tool and this information to make improved decisions. But that's largely because we found an absolute rock star of a ministry official. Um, the, the woman who runs the program is just up at the crack of dawn, goes to bed in the middle of the night, and she's always on the phone communicating with her clinicians. And her direct quote is that our system allows her to sleep better at night, knowing that children will be okay when they receive their vaccines. So if you if you engage with a, with a real champion of health in a in a health system, those individuals value our tools beyond. She actually uses her personal funds to top up the credit on these mm. phones, which says to me that she cares. Um, and that's you know that's not ideal. And that makes a difference. What it what it says to me is that she would rather she would rather put money into this device so that she knows that her community is okay, rather than buy airtime for herself or other decisions that she might make. Um, and that makes a difference in terms of how the how the value system, well, it makes a difference to me knowing that when I, when I leave the system, she will be maintaining it without me there. You also do stock control in clinics, which is, you know, pilferage and yeah. you know, stolen drugs are a, a big issue. Yep. Tell me what the system that you provide can do mm -hmm. and what the limitations are. The current models that we have implemented provide stock out management. So what that means practically is instead of instead of managing all 300 um, product un or 
product identifiers, whether it be alcohol or antiretroviral drugs. What we create is just a structured report for the reporting of a stock out. So that means that a stock is no longer in place. So our system looks only at the actual stocks that are there and not necessarily at the stocks that are missing. So the limitation of SMS is, is sheer volume. If you expect a if you expect a clinician to look at this very, very small screen mm. and to run a 300-point report, um, you're dreaming. For the items of drugs. That For the have. items of drugs. It's, it's very small. It's very difficult. It will take a mm. long time. Um, and so instead, our system is optimized for short, um, precise, pointed outcomes. And, and specifically groups of drugs. And groups of drugs and critical drugs. So mm. if you look at antiretrovirals, if there's a stock out of those, you could have patient death. And so the priority there is to is to ensure that those key drugs are in place. Um, and this pilot has been running now for just over two years. And we saw, I think, a 141% decrease in stock outs in the, in the district where we were working. Um, and as I said, the SMS-based system has been maintained. Um, and the I see... I see M Health and specifically SMS-based interventions as a starting point for innovation. It's a it's a familiar space where clinicians and Ministry of Health, ministers of health, and also um, broader NGOs can start to feel comfortable with using these systems instead of being intimidated. I mean, imagine being mm -hmm. a doctor, the most respected individual in your community, and all of a sudden you're given this massive tablet that makes you look stupid. Mm. It makes you look inept. You don't know how to swipe. You don't know mm. how to type on those touch type screens. Um, as opposed to me giving you your phone with a new system on it that I provide you training on, you maintain dignity, you maintain professionalism, and you feel strongly equipped to do your job in a better way. And what's more than that, you get the you get the, I don't know what you call it, the reward of getting an SMS back that says thanks, what you've done has saved a life.